Section 1 of the Douay Reims New Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by James Carson. Douay Reims New Testament. Section 1. The Holy Bible. Translated from the Latin Vulgate. Diligently compared with the hebrew greek and other editions in diverse languages the old testament first published by the english college at douay a d sixteen o nine and sixteen ten and the new testament first published by the english college at rheims a d fifteen eighty two with annotations the whole revised and diligently compared with the latin vulgate by Bishop Richard Challoner, A.D. 1749 to 1752. Volume 3. The New Testament of Our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. History. This three-volume e-text set comes from multiple editions of Challoner's revised Douay Reims version of the Holy Bible. The division of the Old Testaments into two parts follows the two-tome format of the 1609-1610 printing of the Old Testament. In 1568, English exiles, many from Oxford, established the English College of Douay, Douay or Douay, Flanders, under William, later Cardinal Allen. In October 1578, Gregory Martin began the work of preparing an English translation of the Bible for Catholic readers, the first such translation into modern English. Assisting were William Allen, Richard Bristow, Thomas Worthington, and William Reynolds, who revised, criticized, and corrected Dr. Martin's work. The college published the New Testament at Reims, Reims or Rems, France, in 1582 through john fogney with a preface and explanatory notes authored chiefly by bristol allen and worthington later the old testament was published at douay in two parts 1609 and 1610 by lawrence kellum through the efforts of dr worthington then superior of the seminary the translation had been prepared before the appearance of the new testament but the publication was delayed due to financial difficulties the religious and scholarly adherence to the latin vulgate text led to the less elegant and idiomatic words and phrases often found in the translation in some instances where no english word conveyed the full meaning of the latin a latin word was anglicized and its meaning defined in a glossary Although ridiculed by critics, many of these words later found common usage in the English language. Spellings of proper names and the numbering of the psalms are adopted from the Latin Vulgate. In 1749, Dr. Richard Challoner began a major revision of the Douay and Reims texts, the spellings and phrasings of which had become increasingly archaic in the almost two centuries since the translations were first produced. He modernized the diction and introduced a more fluid style, while faithfully maintaining the accuracy of Dr. Martin's texts. This revision became the de facto standard text for English-speaking Catholics until the twentieth century. It is still highly regarded by many for its style, although it is now rarely used for liturgical purposes. The notes included in this electronic edition are generally attributed to Bishop Challoner. The 1610 printing of the second tome of the Old Testament includes an appendix containing the non-canonical books, Prayer of Manassas, Third Book of Estras, and Fourth Book of Estras. While not part of Challoner's revision, the 1610 texts are placed in the appendices of volume 2 of this e-text set. Also included are the original texts of two short books, The Prophecy of Abdias, volume 2, and The Catholic Epistle of Jude the Apostle, 
volume three to give the reader a sense of the language of the first editions in comparison to the challoner revision further background on the douay reims version may be found in a selection from the preface to the fifteen eighty two edition and the original glossary included in the appendices of volume three the holy gospel of jesus christ according to st matthew st matthew one of the twelve apostles who from being a publican that is a tax gatherer was called by our saviour to the apostleship in that profession his name is levi see luke five twenty seven and mark two fourteen he was the first of the evangelists that wrote the gospel and that in hebrew or syro chaldaic which the jews in palestine spoke at that time the original is not now extant but it was translated in the time of the apostles into greek that version was of equal authority he wrote about six years after the lord's ascension matthew chapter one the genealogy of christ he is conceived and born of a virgin the book of the generation of jesus christ son of david the son of abraham abraham begot isaac and isaac begot jacob and jacob begot judas and his brethren and judas begot phares and zara of thamar and phares begot ezron and ezron begot aram and aram begot aminadab and aminadab begot nason and nason begot salmon and salmon begot boaz of rahab and boaz begot obed of ruth and obed begot jesse and jesse begot david the king and david the king begot solomon of her that had been the wife of urias and solomon begot roboam and roboam begot abia and abia begot asa and asa begot josephat and josephat begot Yoram, and Yoram begot ozias and Ozias begot Joatham, and Joatham begot Achaz, and Achaz begot Ezekias, and Ezekias begot Manasses, and Manasses begot Amon, and Amon begot Josias, and Josias begot Jeconius and his brethren in the transmigration of Babylon, and after the transmigration of Babylon, Jeconias begot Salathiel, and Salathiel begot zorobabel and zorobabel begot abiud and abiud begot elikim and elikim begot azor and azor begot sadok and sadok begot akim and akim begot eliud and eliud begot eleazar and eleazar begot mathan and mathan begot jacob and jacob begot joseph the husband of mary of whom was born jesus who is called christ footnote the husband of mary the evangelist gives us rather the pedigree of saint joseph than that of the blessed virgin to conform to the custom of the hebrews who in their genealogies took no notice of women but as they were near akin the pedigree of the one showeth that of the other End of footnote so all the generations from abraham to david are fourteen generations and from david to the transmigration of babylon are fourteen generations and from the transmigration of babylon to christ are fourteen generations now the generation of christ was in this wise when as his mother mary was espoused to joseph before they came together she was found with child of the holy ghost whereupon joseph her husband being a just man and not willing publicly to expose her was minded to put her away privately but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the lord appeared to him in his sleep saying joseph son of david fear not to take unto thee mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the holy ghost and she shall bring forth a son, 
and thou shalt call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which the lord spoke by the prophet saying behold a virgin shall be with child and bring forth a son and they shall call his name emmanuel which being interpreted is god with us and joseph rising up from sleep did as the angel of the lord had commanded him and took unto him his wife and he knew her not till she brought forth her first-born son and he called his name jesus footnote till she brought forth her first-born son from these words helvidius and other heretics most impiously inferred that the blessed virgin mary had other children besides christ but st jerome shows by diverse examples that this expression of the evangelist was a manner of speaking usual among the hebrews to denote by the word until only what is done without any regard to the future thus it is said in genesis eight six and seven that noah sent forth a raven which went forth and did not return till the waters were dried up on the earth that is did not return any more also isaiah's forty six four god says i am till you grow old who dare infer that god should then cease to be also in the first book of maccabees five fifty four and they went up to mount zion with joy and gladness and offered holocausts because not one of them was slain till they had returned in peace that is not one was slain before or after they had returned god saith to his divine son sit on my right hand till i make thy enemies thy footstool shall he sit no longer after his enemies are subdued yea and for all eternity st jerome also proves by scripture examples that an only begotten son was also called firstborn or first begotten because according to the law the firstborn males were to be consecrated to god sanctify unto me saith the lord every firstborn that openeth the womb among the children of israel etc exodus thirteen two end of footnote matthew chapter two the offerings of the wise men the flight into egypt the massacre of the innocents when jesus therefore was born in bethlehem of judah in the days of king herod behold there came wise men from the east to jerusalem saying where is he that is born king of the jews for we have seen his star in the east and are come to adore him and king herod hearing this was troubled and all jerusalem with him and assembling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people he inquired of them where christ should be born for they said to him in bethlehem of judah for so it is written by the prophet and thou bethlehem the land of judah are not the least among the princes of judah for out of thee shall come forth the captain that shall rule my people israel then herod calling privately the wise men learned diligently of them the time of the star which appeared to them and sending them into bethlehem said go and diligently inquire after the child and when you have found him bring me word again that i also may come and adore him who having heard the king went their way and behold the star which they had seen in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the child was and seeing the star they rejoiced with exceeding great joy and entering into the house they found the child with mary his mother and falling down they adored him and opening their treasures they offered him gifts gold frankincense and myrrh and having received an answer in sleep that they should not return to herod they went back another way into their country and after they were departed behold an angel of the lord appeared in sleep to joseph saying 
arise and take the child and his mother and fly into egypt and be there until i shall tell thee for it will come to pass that herod will seek the child to destroy him who arose and took the child and his mother by night and retired into egypt and he was there until the death of herod that it might be fulfilled which the lord spoke by the prophet saying out of egypt have i called my son then herod perceiving that he was deluded by the wise men was exceeding angry and sending killed all the men children that were in bethlehem and in all the borders thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men then was fulfilled that which was spoken by jeremias the prophet saying a voice in ramah was heard lamentation and great mourning rachel bewailing her children and would not be comforted because they are not but when herod was dead behold an angel of the lord appeared in sleep to joseph in egypt saying arise and take the child and his mother and go into the land of israel for they are dead that sought the life of the child who arose and took the child and his mother and came into the land of israel but hearing that archelaus reigned in judea in the room of herod his father he was afraid to go thither and being warned in sleep retired into the quarters of galilee and coming he dwelt in the city called nazareth that it might be fulfilled which was said by the prophets that he shall be called a nazarene matthew chapter three the preaching of john christ is baptized and in those days cometh john the baptist preaching in the desert of judea and saying do penance for the kingdom of heaven is at hand footnote do penance penitentium agite which word according to the use of the scriptures and the holy fathers does not only signify repentance and amendment of life but also punishing past sins by fasting and such like penitential exercises End of footnote. For this is he that was spoken of by Isaiah the prophet, saying, A voice of one crying in the desert, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, to make straight his paths. And the same John had his garment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the country about Jordan, and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. And seeing many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Ye brood of vipers, who hath showed you to flee from the wrath to come. Footnote. Pharisees and Sadducees. These were two sects among the Jews of which the former were for the most part notorious hypocrites, the latter a kind of free thinkers in matters of religion. End of footnote. Bring forth, therefore, fruit worthy of penance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham for our father. For I tell you that God is able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham, for now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that doth not yield good fruit, shall be cut down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you in water unto penance, but he that shall come after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly cleanse his floor and gather his wheat into the barn for the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire then cometh jesus from galilee to the jordan unto john to be baptized by him but john stayed him saying i ought to be baptized by thee and comest thou to me and jesus answering said to him suffer it to be so now 
for so it becometh us to fulfil all justice then he suffered him and jesus being baptized forthwith came out of the water and lo the heavens were opened to him and he saw the spirit of god descending as a dove and coming upon him and behold a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased matthew chapter four christ's fast of forty days he is tempted he begins to preach to call disciples to him and to work miracles then jesus was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil and when he had fasted forty days and forty nights afterwards he was hungry and the tempter coming said to him if thou be the son of god command that these stones be made bread who answered and said it is written not in bread alone doth man live but in every word that proceedeth from the mouth of god then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him upon the pinnacle of the temple and said to him if thou be the son of god cast thyself down for it is written that he hath given his angels charge over thee and in their hands shall they bear thee up lest perhaps thou dash thy foot against a stone jesus said to him it is written again thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god again the devil took him up into a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them footnote showed him etc that is pointed out to him where each kingdom lay and set forth in words what was most glorious and admirable in each of them or also set before his eyes as it were in a large map a lively representation of all those kingdoms and a footnote and said to him all these will i give thee if falling down thou wilt adore me then jesus saith to him be gone satan for it is written the lord thy god shalt thou adore and him only shalt thou serve then the devil left him and behold angels came and ministered to him and when jesus had heard that john was delivered up he retired into galilee and leaving the city nazareth he came and dwelt in capharnaum on the sea coast in the borders of zabulon and nephthalim that it might be fulfilled which was said by isaiah the prophet land of zebulon and land of nephthalim the way of the sea beyond the jordan galilee of the gentiles the people that sat in darkness hath seen great light and to them that sat in the region of the shadow of death light is sprung up from that time jesus began to preach and to say do penance for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and jesus walking by the sea of galilee saw two brethren simon who is called peter and andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers and he saith to them come ye after me and i will make you to be fishers of men and they immediately leaving the nets followed him and going on from thence he saw other two brethren james the son of zebedee and john his brother in a ship with zebedee their father mending their nets and he called them and they forthwith left their nets and father and followed him and jesus went about all galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and every infirmity among the people and his fame went throughout all syria and they presented to him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and such as were possessed by devils and lunatics and those that had the palsy and he cured them and much people followed him from galilee and from decapolis and from jerusalem and from judea and from beyond the jordan matthew chapter five christ's sermon upon the mount the eight beatitudes and seeing the multitudes he went up into a mountain and when he was set down his disciples came unto him and opening his mouth he taught them saying 
blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven footnote the poor in spirit that is the humble and they whose spirit is not set upon riches and a footnote blessed are the meek for they shall possess the land blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are they that hunger and thirst after justice for they shall have their fill blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy blessed are the clean of heart they shall see god blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of god blessed are they that suffer persecution for justice's sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are ye when they shall revile you and persecute you and speak all that is evil against you untruly for my sake be glad and rejoice for your reward is very great in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets that were before you you are the salt of the earth but if the salt lose its savour wherewith shall it be salted it is good for nothing any more but to be cast out and to be trodden on by men you are the light of the world a city seated on a mountain cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but upon a candlestick that it may shine to all that are in the house so let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven do not think that i am come to destroy the law or the prophets i am not come to destroy but to fulfill footnote to fulfill by accomplishing all the figures and prophecies and perfecting all that was imperfect and a footnote for amen i say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall not pass of the law till all be fulfilled footnote amen that is assuredly of a truth this hebrew word amen is here retained by the example and authority of all the four evangelists it is used by our lord as a strong asseveration and affirmation of the truth and a footnote he therefore that shall break one of these least commandments and shall so teach men shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven but he that shall do and teach he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven for i tell you that unless your justice abound more than that of the scribes and pharisees you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven footnote the scribes and pharisees the scribes were the doctors of the law of moses the pharisees were a precise set of men making profession of a more exact observance of the law and upon that account greatly esteemed among the people and a footnote you have heard that it was said to them of old thou shalt not kill and whoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment footnote shall be in danger of the judgment that is shall deserve to be punished by that lesser tribunal among the jews called the judgment which took cognizance of such crimes but i say to you that whoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment and whosoever shall say to his brother raka shall be in danger of the council and whoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire footnote raka a word expressing great indignation or contempt shall be in danger of the council that is shall deserve to be punished by the highest court of judicature called the council or sanhedrin consisting of seventy-two persons where the highest causes were tried and judged which was at jerusalem thou fool this was then looked upon as a heinous injury when uttered with contempt spite or malice and therefore is here so severely condemned shall be in danger of hell-fire literally according to the greek shall deserve to be cast into the gehenna of fire which words our saviour made use of to express the fire and punishments of hell and a footnote if therefore thou offer thy gift at the altar and there thou remember that thy brother hath anything against thee 
leave there thy offering before the altar and go first to be reconciled to thy brother and then coming thou shalt offer thy gift be at agreement with thy adversary betimes whilst thou art in the way with him lest perhaps the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison amen i say to thee thou shalt not go out from thence till you repay the last farthing you have heard that it was said to them of old thou shalt not commit adultery but i say to you that whoever shall look on a woman to lust after her hath already committed adultery with her in his heart and if thy right eye scandalize thee pluck it out and cast it from thee for it is expedient for thee that one of thy members should perish rather than thy whole body be cast into hell footnote scandalize thee that is if it be a stumbling block or occasion of sin to thee by which we are taught to fly the immediate occasion of sin though they be as dear to us or as necessary as a hand or an eye and a footnote and if thy right hand scandalize thee cut it off and cast it from thee for it is expedient for thee that one of thy members should perish rather than that thy whole body go into hell and it hath been said whoever shall put away his wife let him give her a bill of divorce but i say to you that whoever shall put away his wife excepting the cause of fornication maketh her to commit adultery and he that shall marry her that is put away committeth adultery again you have heard that it was said to them of old thou shalt not forswear thyself but thou shalt perform thy oaths to the lord but i say to you not to swear at all neither by heaven for it is the throne of god footnote not to swear at all it is not forbid to swear in truth justice and judgment to the honour of god or our own or neighbour's just defence but only to swear rashly or profanely in common discourse and without necessity and a footnote nor by the earth for it is his footstool nor by jerusalem for it is the city of the great king neither shalt thou swear by thy head because thou canst not make one hair white or black but let your speech be yea yea no no and that which is over and above these is of evil you have heard that it hath been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but i say to you not to resist evil but if one strike thee on thy right cheek turn to him also the other footnote not to resist evil etc what is here commanded is a christian patience under injuries and affronts and to be willing even to suffer still more rather than to indulge the desire of revenge but what is further added does not strictly oblige according to the letter for neither did christ nor st paul turn the other cheek see st john chapter eighteen and acts at chapter twenty three and a footnote and if a man will contend with thee in judgment and take away thy coat let go thy cloak also unto him and whosoever will force thee one mile go with him other two and give to him that asketh of thee and from him that would borrow of thee turn not away you have heard that it hath been said thou shalt love thy neighbour and hate thy enemy but i say to you love your enemies do good to them that hate you and pray for them that persecute and calumniate you that you may be the children of your father who is in heaven who maketh his son to rise upon the good and bad and reigneth upon the just and the unjust and if you love them that love you what reward shall you have do not even the publicans this footnote the publicans these were the gatherers of the public taxes a set of men odious and infamous among the jews for their extortions and injustice and a footnote and if you salute your brethren only what do you more do not also the heathen this be you therefore perfect as also your heavenly father is perfect 
Matthew chapter 6 A continuation of the Sermon on the Mount Take heed that you do not your justice before men to be seen by them otherwise you shall not have a reward of your father who is in heaven footnote your justice that is works of justice which is to say fasting prayer and alms deeds which ought to be performed not out of ostentation or a view to please men but solely to please god end of footnote therefore when thou dost an alms deed sound not a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be honoured by men and may i say to you they have received their reward but when thou dost alms let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doth that thy alms may be in secret and thy father who seeth in secret will repay thee and when ye pray you shall not be as the hypocrites that love to stand and pray in the synagogues and corners of the street that they may be seen by men and men i say to you they have received their reward but thou when thou shalt pray enter into thy chamber and having shut the door pray to thy father in secret and thy father who seeth in secret will repay thee and when you are praying speak not much as the heathens for they think that in their much speaking they may be heard be not you therefore like to them for your father knoweth what is needful for you before you ask him thus therefore shall you pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our super substantial bread footnote super substantial bread in st luke the same word is rendered daily bread it is understood of the bread of life which we receive in the blessed sacrament and a footnote and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen footnote lead us not into temptation that is suffer us not to be overcome by temptation and a footnote for if you will forgive men their offences your heavenly father will forgive you also your offences but if you will not forgive men neither will your father forgive you your offences and when you fast be not as the hypocrites sad for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast amen i say to you they have received their reward but thou when thou fastest anoint thy head and wash thy face that thou appear not to men to fast but to thy father who is in secret and thy father who seeth in secret will repay thee lay not up to yourselves treasures on earth where the rust and moth consume and where thieves break through and steal but lay up to yourselves treasures in heaven where neither the rust nor moth doth consume and where thieves do not break through nor steal for where thy treasure is there is thy heart also the light of thy body is thy eye if thy eye be single thy whole body shall be lightsome but if thy eye shall be evil thy whole body shall be darksome if then the light that is in thee be darkness the darkness itself how great shall it be no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will sustain the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon footnote mammon that is riches worldly interest and a footnote therefore i say to you be not solicitous for your life what you shall eat nor for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than the meat and the body more than the raiment behold the birds of the air for they neither sow nor do they reap nor gather into barns and your heavenly father feedeth them are not you of much more value than they 
and which of you by taking thought can add to his stature one cubit and for raiment why are you solicitous consider the lilies of the field how they grow they labor not neither do they spin but i say to you that not even solomon in all his glory was arrayed as one of these and if the grass of the field which is to-day and to-morrow is cast into the oven god doth so clothe how much more you o ye of little faith be not solicitous therefore saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewith shall we be clothed for after all these things do the heathens seek for your father knoweth that you have need of all these things seek ye therefore first the kingdom of god and his justice and all these things shall be added unto you be not therefore solicitous for to-morrow for the morrow will be solicitous for itself sufficient for the day is the evil thereof matthew chapter seven the third part of the sermon on the mount judge not that you may not be judged for with what judgment you judge you shall be judged and with what measure you meet it shall be measured to you again and why seest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye and seest not the beam that is in thy own eye or how sayest thou to thy brother let me cast the mote out of thy eye and behold a beam is in thy own eye thou hypocrite cast out first the beam out of thy own eye and then shalt thou see to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye give not that which is holy to dogs neither cast ye your pearls before swine lest perhaps they trample them under their feet and turning upon you they tear you ask and it shall be given you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened to you for every one that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened or what man is there among you of whom if his son shall ask bread will he reach him a stone or if he shall ask him a fish will he reach him a serpent if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to them that ask him all things therefore whatsoever you would that men should do to you do you also to them for this is the law and the prophets enter ye in at the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there are who go in thereat how narrow is the gate and straight is the way that leadeth to life and few there are that find it beware of false prophets who come to you in the clothing of sheep but inwardly they are ravening wolves by their fruits you shall know them do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit and the evil tree bringeth forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can an evil tree bring forth good fruit every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit shall be cut down and shall be cast into the fire wherefore by their fruit shall you know them not every one that saith to me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doth the will of my father who is in heaven he shall enter into the kingdom of heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have not we prophesied in thy name and cast out devils in thy name and done many miracles in thy name and then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me you that work iniquity every one therefore that heareth these my words and doth them shall be likened to a wise man that built his house upon a rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded on a rock and every one that heareth 
these my words and doth them not shall be like a foolish man that built his house upon the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall thereof and it came to pass when jesus had fully ended these words the people were in admiration at his doctrine for he was teaching them as one having power and not as the scribes and pharisees matthew chapter eight christ cleanses the leper heals the centurion's servant peter's mother-in-law and many others he stills the storm at sea drives the devils out of two men possessed and suffers them to go into the swine and when he was come down from the mountain great multitudes followed him and behold a leper came and adored him saying lord if thou wilt thou canst make me clean and jesus stretching forth his hand touched him saying i will be thou made clean and forthwith his leprosy was cleansed and jesus saith to him see thou tell no man but go show thyself to the priest and offer the gift which moses commanded for a testimony unto them and when he had entered into capharnaum there came to him a centurion beseeching him and saying lord my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy and is grievously tormented and jesus saith to him i will come and heal him and the centurion making answer said lord i am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof but only say the word and my servant shall be healed for i also am a man subject to authority having under me soldiers and i say to this go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doeth it and jesus hearing this marvelled and said to them that followed him amen i say to you i have not found so great faith in israel and i say to you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with abraham and isaac and jacob in the kingdom of heaven but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into the exterior darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth and jesus said to the centurion go and as thou hast believed so be it done to thee and the servant was healed at the same hour and when jesus was come to peter's house he saw his wife's mother lying and sick of a fever and he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered to them and when evening was come they brought to him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and all that were sick he healed that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet isaiah saying he took our infirmities and bore our diseases and jesus seeing great multitudes about him gave orders to pass over the water and a certain scribe came and said to him master i will follow thee whithersoever thou shalt go and jesus said to him the foxes have holes and the birds of the air nests but the son of man hath not where to lay his head and another of his disciples said to him lord suffer me first to go and bury my father but jesus said to him follow me and let the dead bury their dead and when he entered into the boat his disciples followed him and behold a great tempest arose in the sea so that the boat was covered with waves but he was asleep and they came to him and awaked him saying lord save us we perish and jesus saith to them why are you fearful o ye of little faith then rising up he commanded the winds and the sea and there came a great calm but the men wondered saying what manner of man is this for the winds and the sea obey him and when he was come on the other side of the water into the country of the Gerasens. There met him two that were possessed with devils, coming out of the sepulchres, 
exceeding fierce so that no one could pass by that way and behold they cried out saying what have we to do with thee jesus son of god art thou come hither to torment us before the time and there was not far from them a herd of many swine feeding and the devils besought him saying if thou cast us out hence send us into the herd of swine and he said to them go but they going out went into the swine and behold the whole herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea and they perished in the waters and they that kept them fled and coming into the city told everything and concerning them that had been possessed by the devils and behold the whole city went out to meet jesus and when they saw him they besought him that he would depart from their coast matthew chapter nine christ heals one sick of palsy calls matthew cures the issue of blood raises to life the daughter of jairus gives sight to two blind men and heals a dumb man possessed by the devil and entering into a boat he passed over the water and came into his own city and behold they brought to him one sick of the palsy lying in a bed and jesus seeing their faith said to the man sick of the palsy be of good heart son thy sins are forgiven thee and behold some of the scribes said within themselves he blasphemeth and jesus seeing their thoughts said why do you think evil in your hearts whether is easier to say thy sins are forgiven thee or to say arise and walk but that you may know that the son of man hath power on earth to forgive sins then said he to the man sick of the palsy arise take up thy bed and go into thy house and he arose and went into his house and the multitude seeing it feared and glorified god that gave such power to men and when jesus passed on from thence he saw a man sitting in the custom house named matthew and he saith to him follow me and he arose and followed him and it came to pass as he was sitting at meat in the house behold many publicans and sinners came and sat down with jesus and his disciples and the pharisees seeing it said to his disciples why doth your master eat with publicans and sinners but jesus hearing it said they that are in health need not a physician but they that are ill go then and learn what this meaneth i will have mercy and not sacrifice for i am not come to call the just but sinners then came to him the disciples of john saying why do we and the pharisees fast often but thy disciples do not fast and jesus said to them can the children of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them for the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and then they shall fast footnote can the children of the bridegroom this by a hebraism signifies the friends or companions of the bridegroom and a footnote and nobody putteth a piece of raw cloth onto an old garment for it taketh away the fullness thereof from the garment and there is made a greater rent and neither do they put new wines into old bottles otherwise the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish but new wine they put into new bottles and both are preserved as he was speaking these things unto them behold a certain ruler came up and adored him saying lord my daughter is even now dead but come lay thy hand upon her and she shall live and jesus rising up followed him with his disciples and behold a woman who was troubled with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment for she said within herself if i shall touch only his garment i shall be healed but jesus turning and seeing her said be of good heart daughter thy faith hath made thee whole 
and the woman was made whole from that hour and when jesus was come into the house of the ruler and saw the minstrels and the multitude making a rout he said give place for the girl is not dead but sleepeth and they laughed him to scorn and when the multitude was put forth he went in and took her by the hand and the maid arose and the fame thereof went abroad into all the country and as jesus passed from thence there followed him two blind men crying out and saying have mercy on us o son of david and when he was come to the house the blind men came to him and jesus saith to them do you believe that i can do this unto you they say to him yea lord then he touched their eyes saying according to thy faith be it done unto you and their eyes were opened and jesus strictly charged them saying see that no man know this but they going out spread his fame abroad in all that country and when they were gone out behold they brought him a dumb man possessed with a devil and after the devil was cast out the dumb man spoke and the multitudes wondered saying never was the like seen in israel but the pharisees said by the prince of devils he casteth out devils and jesus went about all the cities and towns teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every infirmity and seeing the multitudes he had compassion on them because they were distressed and lying like sheep that have no shepherd then he saith to his disciples the harvest indeed is great but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he send forth laborers into his harvest matthew chapter ten christ sends out his twelve apostles with the power of miracles the lessons he gives them and having called his twelve disciples together he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of diseases and all manner of infirmities and the names of the twelve apostles are these the first simon who is called peter and andrew his brother james the son of zebedee and john his brother philip and bartholomew thomas and matthew the publican and james the son of alpheus and thaddeus simon the Cananean, and judas iscariot who also betrayed him these twelve jesus sent commanding them saying go ye not into the way of the gentiles and into the city of the samaritans enter ye not but go ye rather to the lost sheep of the house of israel and going preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the lepers cast out devils freely have you received freely give do not possess gold nor silver nor money in your purses nor script for your journey nor two coats nor shoes nor a staff for the workman is worthy of his meat and into whatsoever city or town you shall enter inquire who in it is worthy and there abide till you go thence and when you come into the house salute it saying peace be to this house and if that house be worthy your peace shall come upon it but if it be not worthy your peace shall return to you and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words going forth out of that house or city shake off the dust from your feet amen i say to you it shall be more tolerable for the land of sodom and gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city behold i send you as sheep in the midst of wolves be ye therefore wise as serpents and simple as doves footnote simple that is harmless plain sincere and without guile End of footnote. but beware of men 
for they will deliver you up in councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues and you shall be brought before governors and before kings for my sake for a testimony to them and to the gentiles but when they shall deliver you up take no thought how or what to speak for it shall be given you in that hour what to speak for it is not you that speak but the spirit of your father that speaketh in you the brother also shall deliver up the brother to death and the father the son and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall put them to death and you shall be hated by all men for my name's sake but he that shall persevere unto the end he shall be saved and when they shall persecute you in this city flee into another amen i say to you you shall not finish all the cities of israel till the son of man come the disciple is not above the master nor the servant above his lord it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his lord if they have called the good man of the house beelzebub how much more them of his household therefore fear them not for nothing is covered that shall not be revealed nor hid that shall not be known that which i tell you in the dark speak ye in the light and that which you hear in the ear preach ye upon the housetops and fear ye not them that kill the body and are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him that can destroy both soul and body in hell are not two sparrows sold for a farthing and not one of them shall fall on the ground without your father but the very hairs of your head are all numbered fear not therefore better are you than many sparrows every one therefore that shall confess me before men i will also confess him before my father who is in heaven but he that shall deny me before men i will also deny him before my father who is in heaven do not think that i came to send peace upon earth i came not to send peace but the sword for i came to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law footnote i came to set a man at variance etc not that this was the end or design of the coming of our saviour but that his coming and his doctrine would have this effect by reason of the obstinate resistance that many would make and of their persecuting all such as should adhere to him End of footnote. and a man's enemies shall be they of his own household he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and he that taketh not up his cross and followeth me is not worthy of me he that findeth his life shall lose it and he that shall lose his life for me shall find it he that receiveth you receiveth me and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive the reward of a prophet and he that receiveth a just man in the name of a just man shall receive the reward of a just man and whosoever shall give to drink to one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple amen i say to you he shall not lose his reward end of section one section two of the douay reims new testament this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 2 Matthew chapter 11 John sends his disciples to Christ, who upbraids the Jews for their incredulity, and calls to him such as are sensible of their burdens. 
and it came to pass when jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples he passed from thence to teach and to preach in their cities now when john had heard in prison the works of christ sending two of his disciples he said to him art thou he that art to come or look we for another and jesus making answer said to them go and relate to john what you have heard and seen the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear the dead rise again the poor have the gospel preached to them and blessed is he that shall not be scandalized in me footnote scandalized in me that is who shall not take occasion of scandal or offence from my humility and the disgraceful death of the cross which i shall endure and a footnote and when they went their way jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning john what went you out into the desert to see a reed shaken with the wind but what went you out to see a man clothed in soft garments behold they that are clothed in soft garments are in the houses of kings but what went you out to see a prophet yea i tell you and more than a prophet for this is he of whom it is written behold i send my angel before my face who shall prepare thy way for thee amen i say to you there hath not risen among them that are born of women a greater than john the baptist yet he that is the lesser in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he and from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent bear it away footnote suffereth violence etc it is not to be obtained but by main force by using violence upon ourselves by mortification and penance and resisting our perverse inclinations and a footnote for all the prophets and the law prophesied until john and if you will receive it he is elias that is to come footnote he is elias etc not in person but in spirit st luke chapter one verse seventeen and a footnote he that hath ears to hear let him hear but whereunto shall i esteem this generation to be like it is like to children sitting in the market-place who crying to their companions say we have piped to you and you have not danced we have lamented and you have not mourned for john came neither eating nor drinking and they say he hath a devil the son of man came eating and drinking and they say behold a man that is a glutton and a wine drinker a friend of publicans and sinners and wisdom is justified by her children then began he to upbraid the cities wherein were done the most of his miracles for that they had not done penance woe thee Corazane, woe to thee bethsaida for if in tyre and sidon had been wrought the miracles that have been wrought in you they had long ago done penance in sackcloth and ashes but i say unto you it shall be more tolerable for tyre and sidon in the day of judgment than for you and thou capharnum shalt thou be exalted up to heaven thou shalt go down even unto hell for if in sodom had been wrought the miracles that have been wrought in thee perhaps it had remained unto this day but i say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of sodom and the day of judgment than for thee at that time jesus answered and said i confess to thee o father lord of heaven and earth because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them to little ones yea father for so hath it seemed good in thy sight all things are delivered to me by my father and no one knoweth the son but the father neither doth 
any one know the father but the son and he to whom it shall please the son to reveal him come to me all you that labour and are burdened and i will refresh you take up my yoke upon you and learn of me because i am meek and humble of heart and you shall find rest to your souls for my yoke is sweet and my burden light matthew chapter twelve christ reproves the blindness of the pharisees and confutes their attributing his miracles to satan at that time jesus went through the corn on the sabbath and his disciples being hungry began to pluck the ears and to eat and the pharisees seeing them said to him behold thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do on the sabbath days but he said to them have you not read what david did when he was hungry and they that were with him how he entered into the house of god and did eat the loaves of proposition which it was not lawful for him to eat nor for them that were with him but for the priests only footnote the loaves of proposition so were called the twelve loaves which were placed before the sanctuary in the temple of god and footnote or have ye not read in the law that on the sabbath days the priests in the temple break the sabbath and are without blame but i tell you that there is here a greater than the temple and if you knew what this meaneth i will have mercy and not sacrifice you would never have condemned the innocent for the son of man is lord even of the sabbath and when he had passed from thence he came into their synagogues and behold there was a man who had a withered hand and they asked him saying is it lawful to heal on the sabbath days that they might accuse him but he said to them what man shall there be among you that hath one sheep and if the same fall into a pit on the sabbath day will not take hold on it and lift it up how much better is a man than a sheep therefore it is lawful to do a good deed on the sabbath days then he saith to the man stretch forth thy hand and he stretched it forth and it was restored to health even as the other and the pharisees going out made a consultation against him how they might destroy him but jesus knowing it retired from thence and many followed him and he healed them all and he charged them that they should not make him known that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by isaiah the prophet saying behold my servant whom i have chosen my beloved in whom my soul hath been well pleased i will put my spirit upon him and he shall show judgment to the gentiles he shall not contend nor cry out neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets the bruised reed he shall not break and smoking flax he shall not extinguish till he send forth judgment unto victory and in his name the gentiles shall hope then was offered to him one possessed with a devil blind and dumb and he healed him so that he spoke and saw and all the multitudes were amazed and said is not this the son of david but the pharisees hearing it said this man casteth not out devils but by beelzebub the prince of the devils and jesus knowing their thoughts said to them every kingdom divided against itself shall be made desolate and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand and if satan cast out satan he is divided against himself how then shall his kingdom stand and if i by beelzebub cast out devils by whom do your children cast them out therefore they shall be your judges but if i by the spirit of god cast out devils then is the kingdom of god come upon you or how can any one enter into the house of the strong and rifle his goods unless he first bind the strong and then he will rifle his house he that is not with me is against me and he that gathereth not with me scattereth therefore i say to you 
every sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven men but the blasphemy of the spirit shall not be forgiven footnote the blasphemy of the spirit the sin here spoken of is that blasphemy by which the pharisees attributed the miracles of christ wrought by the spirit of god to beelzebub the prince of devils now this kind of sin is usually accompanied with so much obstinacy and such wilful opposing the spirit of god and the known truth that men who are guilty of it are seldom or never converted and therefore are never forgiven because they will not repent otherwise there is no sin which god cannot or will not forgive to such as sincerely repent and have recourse to the keys of the church End of footnote. and whoever shall speak a word against the son of man it shall be forgiven him but he that shall speak against the holy ghost it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world nor in the world to come footnote nor in the world to come from these words st augustine de civitas dei liber twenty one line thirteen and st gregory a dialogues fourth chapter line thirty nine gather that some sins may be remitted in the world to come and consequently that there is a purgatory or a middle place and a footnote either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree evil and its fruit evil for by the fruit the tree is known o generation of vipers how can you speak good things whereas you are evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh a good man out of a good treasure bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of an evil treasure bringeth forth evil things but i say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall render an account for it in the day of judgment footnote every idle word this shows there must be a place of temporal punishment hereafter where these slighter faults shall be punished and a footnote for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned then some of the scribes and pharisees answered him saying master we would see a sign from thee footnote a sign that is a miracle from heaven st luke chapter eleven verse sixteen and a footnote who answering said to them an evil and adulterous generation seeketh a sign and a sign shall not be given it but the sign of jonas the prophet for as jonas was in the whale's belly three days and three nights so shall the son of man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights footnote three days etc not complete days and nights but part of three days and three nights taken according to the way that the hebrews counted their days and nights that is from evening to evening and a footnote the men of nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they did penance at the preaching of jonas and behold a greater than jonas here the queen of the south shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of solomon and behold a greater than solomon here and when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none then he saith i will return into my house from whence i came out and coming he findeth it empty swept and garnished then he goeth and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is made worse than the first so shall it be also to this wicked generation and as he was yet speaking to the multitudes behold his mother and his brethren stood without seeking to speak to him and one said unto him 
behold thy mother and thy brethren stand without seeking thee but he answering him that told him said who is my mother and who are my brethren footnote who is my mother this was not spoken by way of slighting his mother but to show that we are never to suffer ourselves to be taken from the service of god by any inordinate affection to our earthly parents and that which our lord chiefly regarded in his mother was her doing the will of his father in heaven it may also further allude to the reprobation of the jews his carnal kindred and the election of the gentiles and a footnote and stretching forth his hand toward his disciples he said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do the will of my father that is in heaven he is my brother and sister and mother matthew chapter thirteen the parables of the sower and the cockle of the mustard seed etc the same day jesus going out of the house sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went up into a boat and sat and all the multitude stood on the shore and he spoke to them many things in parables saying behold the sower went forth to sow and whilst he soweth some fell by the wayside and the birds of the air came and ate them up and other some fell upon stony ground where they had not much earth and they sprang up immediately because they had no deepness of earth and when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had not root they withered away and others fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them and others fell upon good ground and they brought forth fruit some a hundredfold some sixtyfold and some thirtyfold he that hath ears to hear let him hear and his disciples came and said to him why speakest thou to them in parables who answered and said to them because to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given for he that hath to him shall be given and he shall abound but he that hath not from him shall be taken away that also which he hath therefore do i speak to them in parables because seeing they see not and hearing they hear not neither do they understand and the prophecy of isaiah is fulfilled in them who saith by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand and seeing you shall see and shall not perceive for the heart of this people is grown gross and with their ears they have been dull of hearing and their eyes they have shut lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and be converted and i should heal them but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear for amen i say to you many prophets and just men have desired to see the things that you see and have not seen them and to hear the things that you hear and have not heard them hear you therefore the parable of the sower when any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not there cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart this is he that received the seed by the wayside and he that received the seed upon stony ground is he that heareth the word and immediately receiveth it with joy yet hath he not root in himself but is only for a time and when there ariseth tribulation and persecution because of the word he is presently scandalized and he that received the seed among thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choketh up the word and he becometh fruitless but he that receiveth the seed upon good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth and beareth fruit and yieldeth the one a hundredfold 
and another sixty and another thirty another parable he proposed to them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that sowed good seed in his field but while men were asleep his enemy came and oversowed cockle among the wheat and went his way and when the blade was sprung up and had brought forth fruit there appeared also the cockle and the servants of the good man of the house coming said to him sir didst thou not sow good seed in thy field whence then hath this cockle and he said to them an enemy hath done this and the servants said to him wilt thou that we go and gather it up and he said no lest perhaps gathering up the cockle you root up the wheat also together with it suffer both to grow until the harvest and in the time of the harvest i will say to the reapers gather up first the cockle and bind it into bundles to burn but the wheat gather ye into my barn another parable he proposed unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field which is the least indeed of all seeds but when it is grown up it is greater than all herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and dwell in the branches thereof another parable he spoke to them the kingdom of heaven is like to leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until the whole was leavened all these things jesus spoke in parables to the multitudes and without parables he did not speak to them that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying i will open my mouth in parables i will utter things hidden from the foundation of the world then having sent away the multitudes he came into the house and his disciples came to him saying expound to us the parable of the cockle of the field who made answer and said to them he that soweth the good seed is the son of man the field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom and the cockle are the children of the wicked one and the enemy that sowed them is the devil for the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels even as cockle therefore is gathered up and burned with fire so shall it be at the end of the world the son of man shall send his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all scandals and them that work iniquity and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth then shall the just shine as the sun in the kingdom of their father he that hath ears to hear let him hear the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hidden in a field which a man having found hid it and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field again the kingdom of heaven is like to a merchant seeking good pearls who when he has found one pearl of great price went his way and sold all that he had and bought it again the kingdom of heaven is like to a net cast into the sea and gathering together of all kinds of fishes which when it was filled they drew out and sitting by the shore they chose out the good into vessels but the bad they cast forth so shall it be at the end of the world the angels shall go out and shall separate the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth have ye understood all these things they said to him yes he said unto them therefore every scribe instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like to a man that is a householder who bringeth forth out of his treasure new things and old and it came to pass when jesus had finished these parables he passed from thence and coming into his own country he taught them in their synagogues so that they wondered and said how came this man by this wisdom and miracles 
is not this the carpenter's son is not his mother called mary and his brethren james and joseph and simon and jude footnote his brethren these were the children of mary the wife of cleophas sister to our blessed lady st matthew chapter twenty seven verse fifty six st john chapter nineteen verse twenty five and therefore according to the usual style of the scripture they are called brethren that is near relations to our saviour and a footnote and his sisters are they not all with us whence therefore hath he all these things and they were scandalized in this regard but jesus said to them a prophet is not without honour save in his own country and in his own house and he wrought not many miracles there because of their unbelief matthew chapter fourteen herod puts john to death christ feeds five thousand in the desert he walks upon the sea and heals all the diseased with a touch of his garment at that time herod the tetrarch heard the fame of jesus footnote tetrarch this word derived from the greek signifies one that rules over the fourth part of a kingdom as herod then ruled over galilee which was but the fourth part of the kingdom of his father End of footnote. and he said to his servants this is john the baptist he is risen from the dead and therefore mighty works show forth themselves in him for herod had apprehended john and bound him and put him into prison because of herodias his brother's wife for john said to him it is not lawful for thee to have her and having a mind to put him to death he feared the people because they esteemed him as a prophet but on herod's birthday the daughter of herodias danced before them and pleased herod whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask of him but she being instructed before by her mother said give me here in a dish the head of john the baptist and the king was struck sad yet because of his oath and for them that sat with him at table he commanded it to be given and he sent and beheaded john in the prison and his head was brought in a dish and it was given to the damsel and she brought it to her mother and his disciples came and took the body and buried it and came and told jesus which when jesus had heard he retired from thence by a boat into a desert place apart and the multitudes having heard of it followed him on foot out of the cities and he coming forth saw a great multitude and had compassion on them and healed their sick and when it was evening his disciples came to him saying this is a desert place and the hour is now past send away the multitudes that going into the towns they may buy themselves victuals but jesus said to them they have no need to go give you them to eat they answered him we have not here but five loaves and two fishes who said to them bring them hither to me and when he had commanded the multitude to sit down upon the grass he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitudes and they did all eat and were filled and they took up what remained twelve full baskets of fragments and the number of them that did eat was five thousand men besides women and children and forthwith jesus obliged his disciples to go up into the boat and to go before him over the water till he dismissed the people and having dismissed the multitude he went into a mountain alone to pray and when it was evening he was there alone but the boat in the midst of the sea was tossed with waves for the wind was contrary and in the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking upon the sea 
and they seeing him walking upon the sea were troubled saying it is an apparition and they cried out for fear and immediately jesus spoke to them saying be of good heart it is i fear ye not and peter making answer said lord if it be thou bid me come to thee upon the waters and he said come and peter going out of the boat walked upon the water to come to jesus but seeing the wind strong he was afraid and when he began to sink he cried out saying lord save me and immediately jesus stretching forth his hand took hold of him and said to him o thou of little faith why didst thou doubt and when they were come up into the boat the wind ceased and they that were in the boat came and adored him saying indeed thou art the son of god and having passed the water they came into the country of genesar and when the men of that place had knowledge of him they sent into all the country and brought to him all that were diseased and they besought him that they might touch but the hem of his garment and as many as touched were made whole matthew chapter fifteen christ reproves the scribes he cures the daughter of the woman of canaan and many others and feeds four thousand with seven loaves then came to him from jerusalem scribes and pharisees saying why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the ancients for they wash not their hands when they eat bread but he answering said to them why do you also transgress the commandment of god for your tradition for god said honor thy father and mother and he that shall curse father or mother let him die the death but you say whoever shall say to father or mother the gift whatsoever proceedeth from me shall profit thee footnote the gift etc that is the offering that i shall make to god shall be instead of that which should be expended for thy profit this tradition of the pharisees was calculated to enrich themselves by exempting children from giving any further assistance to their parents if they once offered to the temple and the priests that which should have been the support of their parents but this was a violation of the law of god and of nature which our saviour here condemns and a footnote and he shall not honour his father or his mother and you have made void the commandment of god for your tradition hypocrites well hath isaiah prophesied of you saying this people honoureth me with their lips but their heart is far from me and in vain do they worship me teaching doctrines and commandments of men footnote commandments of men the doctrines and commandments here reprehended are such as are either contrary to the law of god as that of neglecting parents under pretence of giving to god or at least are frivolous unprofitable and no ways conducing to true piety as that of often washing hands etc without regard to the purity of the heart but as to the rules and ordinances of the holy church touching fasts festivals etc these are no ways repugnant to but highly agreeable to god's holy word and all christian piety neither are they to be counted among the doctrines and commandments of men because they proceed not from mere human authority but from that which christ has given to his church whose pastors he has commanded us to hear and obey even as himself st luke chapter ten verse sixteen st matthew chapter eighteen verse seventeen end of footnote and having called together the multitudes unto him he said to them hear ye and understand not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man but what cometh out of the mouth this defileth a man footnote not that which goeth into etc no uncleanness in meat nor any dirt contracted by eating it with unwashed hands can defile the soul but sin alone or a disobedience of the heart to the ordinance and will of god 
and thus when adam took the forbidden fruit it was not the apple which entered into the mouth but the disobedience to the law of god which defiled him the same is to be said if a jew in the time of the old law had eaten swine's flesh or a christian convert in the days of the apostles contrary to their ordinance had eaten blood or if any of the faithful at present should transgress the ordinance of god's church by breaking the fasts for in all these cases the soul would be defiled not indeed by that which goeth into the mouth but by the disobedience of the heart in wilfully transgressing the ordinance of god or of those who have their authority from him and a footnote then came his disciples and said to him dost thou know that the pharisees when they heard this word were scandalized but he answered saying every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up let them alone they are blind and leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind both fall into the pit and peter answering said to him expound to us this parable but he said are you also yet without understanding do you not understand that whatsoever entereth into the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the privy but the things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and those things defile a man for from the heart come forth evil thoughts murders adulteries fornications thefts false testimonies blasphemies these are the things that defile a man but to eat with unwashed hands doth not defile a man and jesus went from thence and retired into the coast of tyre and sidon and behold a woman of canaan who came out of those coasts crying out said to him have mercy on me o lord thou son of david my daughter is grievously troubled by a devil who answered her not a word and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she crieth after us and he answering said i was not sent but to the sheep that are lost of the house of israel but she came and adored him saying lord help me who answering said it is not good to take the bread of the children and cast it to the dogs but she said yea lord for the whelps also eat of the crumbs that fall from the table of their masters then jesus answering said to her o woman great is thy faith be it done to thee as thou wilt and her daughter was cured from that hour and when jesus had passed away from thence he came nigh the sea of galilee and going up into the mountain he sat there and there came to him great multitudes having with them the dumb the blind the lame the maimed and many others and they cast them down at his feet and he healed them so that the multitudes marvelled seeing the dumb speak the lame walk the blind see and they glorified the god of israel and jesus called together his disciples and said i have compassion on the multitudes because they continue with me now three days and have not what to eat and i will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way and the disciples said unto him whence then should we have so many loaves in the desert as to fill so great a multitude and jesus said to them how many loaves have you but they said seven and a few little fishes and he commanded the multitude to sit down upon the ground and taking the seven loaves and the fishes and giving thanks he brake and gave them to his disciples and the disciples gave to the people and they did all eat and had their fill and they took up seven baskets full of what remained of the fragments and they that did eat were four thousand men besides children and women and having dismissed the multitude he went up into a boat and came into the coasts of magedon matthew chapter sixteen christ refuses to show the pharisees a sign from heaven 
peter's confession is rewarded he is rebuked for opposing christ's passion all his followers must deny themselves and there came to him the pharisees and sadducees tempting and they asked him to show them a sign from heaven but he answered and said to them when it is evening you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red and in the morning to-day there will be a storm for the sky is red and lowering you know then how to discern the face of the sky and can you not know the signs of the times a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign and a sign shall not be given it but the sign of jonas the prophet and he left them and went away and when his disciples were come over the water they had forgotten to take bread who said to them take heed and beware of the leaven of the pharisees and sadducees but they thought within themselves saying because we have taken no bread and jesus knowing it said why do you think within yourselves o ye of little faith for that you have no bread do you not yet understand neither do you remember the five loaves among five thousand men and how many baskets you took up nor the seven loaves among four thousand men and how many baskets you took up why do you not understand that it was not concerning bread i said to you beware of the leaven of the pharisees and sadducees then they understood that he said not that they should beware of the leaven of bread but of the doctrine of the pharisees and sadducees and jesus came into the quarters of caesarea philippi and he asked his disciples saying whom do men say that the son of man is but they said some john the baptist and other some elias and others jeremias or one of the prophets jesus saith to them but whom do you say that i am simon peter answered and said thou art christ the son of the living god and jesus answering said to him blessed art thou simon bar jonah because flesh and blood hath not revealed it to thee but my father who is in heaven and i say to thee thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it footnote thou art peter etc as saint peter by divine revelation here made a solemn profession of his faith of the divinity of christ so in recompense of this faith and profession our lord here declares to him the dignity to which he is pleased to raise him that is that he to whom he had already given the name of peter signifying a rock saint john chapter one verse forty two should be a rock indeed of invincible strength for the support of the building of the church in which building he should be next to christ himself the chief foundation stone in quality of chief pastor ruler and governor and should have accordingly all fullness of ecclesiastical power signified by the keys of the kingdom of heaven upon this rock etc the words of christ to peter spoken in the vulgar language of the jews which our lord made use of were the same as if he had said in english thou art a rock and upon this rock i will build my church so that by the plain course of the words peter is here declared to be the rock upon which the church was to be built christ himself being both the principal foundation and the founder of the same where also note that christ by building his house that is his church upon a rock has thereby secured it against all storms and floods like the wise builder st matthew chapter seven verses twenty four and twenty five the gates of hell etc that is the powers of darkness and whatever satan can do either by himself or his agents for as the church is here likened to a house or fortress built on the rock so the adverse powers are likened to a contrary house or fortress the gates of which that is the whole strength and all the efforts it can make will never be able to prevail over the city or church of christ by this promise we are fully assured that 
neither idolatry heresy nor any pernicious error whatsoever shall at any time prevail over the church of christ End of footnote. and i will give to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind upon earth it shall be bound also in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth it shall be loosed also in heaven footnote loose on earth the loosing of bands of temporal punishment due to sins is called an indulgence the power of which is here granted and a footnote then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was jesus the christ from that time jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to jerusalem and suffer many things from the ancients and scribes and chief priests and be put to death and the third day rise again and peter taking him began to rebuke him saying lord be it far from thee this shall not come unto thee footnote and peter taking him that is taking him aside out of a tender love respect and zeal for his lord and master's honour began to expostulate with him as it were to rebuke him saying lord far be it from thee to suffer death but the lord said to peter verse twenty three go behind me satan these words may signify be gone from me but the holy fathers expound them otherwise that is come after me or follow me and by these words the lord would have peter to follow him in his suffering and not to oppose the divine will by contradiction for the word satan means in hebrew an adversary or one that opposes and a footnote who turning said to peter go behind me satan thou art a scandal unto me because thou savourest not the things that are of god but the things that are of men then jesus said to his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for he that will save his life shall lose it and he that shall lose his life for my sake shall find it for what doth it profit a man if he gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul or what exchange shall a man give for his soul for the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels and then will he render to every man according to his works amen i say to you there are some of them that stand here that shall not taste death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom matthew chapter seventeen the transfiguration of christ he cures the lunatic child foretells his passion and pays the didrachma and after six days jesus taketh unto him peter and james and john his brother and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart and he was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his garments became white as snow and behold there appeared to them moses and elias talking with him and peter answering said to jesus lord it is good for us to be the here if thou wilt let us make here three tabernacles one for thee and one for moses and one for elias and as he was yet speaking behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and lo a voice out of the cloud saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him and the disciples hearing fell upon their face and were very much afraid and jesus came and touched them and said to them arise and fear not and they lifting up their eyes saw no one but only jesus and as they came down from the mountain jesus charged them saying tell the vision to no man till the son of man be risen from the dead and his disciples asked him saying why then do the scribes say that elias must come first but he answering said to them elias indeed shall come and restore all things but i say to you that elias is already come and they knew him not 
but have done unto him whatsoever they had a mind so also the son of man shall suffer from them then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them of john the baptist and when he was come to the multitude there came to him a man falling down on his knees before him saying lord have pity on my son for he is a lunatic and suffereth much for he falleth often into the fire and often into the water and i brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him then jesus answered and said o unbelieving and perverse generation how long shall i be with you how long shall i suffer you bring him hither to me and jesus rebuked him and the devil went out of him and the child was cured from that hour then came the disciples to jesus secretly and said why could not we cast him out jesus said to them because of your unbelief for amen i say to you if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed you shall say to this mountain remove from hence hither and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible to you footnote as a grain of mustard seed that is a perfect faith which in its properties and its fruits resembles the grain of mustard seed in the parable chapter thirteen verse thirty one and a footnote but this kind is not cast out but by prayer and fasting and when they abode together in galilee jesus said to them the son of man will be betrayed into the hands of men and they shall kill him and the third day he shall rise again and they were troubled exceedingly and when they were come to capharnaum they that received the didachma said to peter and said to him doth not your master pay the didachma footnote the didachma the didachma was a half a sickle or half a stater that is about fifteen pence english which was a tax laid upon every head for the service of the temple he said yes and when he was come into the house jesus prevented him saying what is thy opinion simon the kings of the earth of whom do they receive tribute or custom of their own children or of strangers and he said of strangers jesus said to him then the children are free but that we may not scandalize them go to the sea and cast in a hook and that fish which shall first come up take and when thou hast opened its mouth thou shalt find a stater take that and give it to them for me and thee matthew chapter eighteen christ teaches humility to beware of scandals and to flee the occasions of sin to denounce to the church incorrigible sinners and to look upon such as refuse to hear the church as heathens he promises to his disciples the power of binding and loosing and that he will be in the midst of their assemblies no forgiveness for them that will not forgive at that hour the disciples came to jesus saying who thinkest thou is the greater in the kingdom of heaven and jesus calling unto him a little child set him in the midst of them and said amen i say to you unless you be converted and become as little children you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child he is the greater in the kingdom of heaven and he that shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me but he that shall scandalize one of these little ones that believe in me it were better for him that a millstone should be hanged around his neck and that he should be drowned in the depth of the sea footnote shall scandalize that is shall put a stumbling block in their way and cause them to fall into sin and a footnote woe to the world because of scandals for it must needs be that scandals come but nevertheless woe to that man by whom the scandal cometh footnote it must needs be etc that is considering the wickedness and corruption of the world and a footnote 
and if thy hand or thy foot scandalize thee cut it off and cast it from thee it is better for thee to go into life maimed or lame than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire footnote scandalize thee that is cause thee to offend and a footnote and if thy eye scandalize thee pluck it out and cast it from thee it is better for thee having one eye to enter into life than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire see that you despise not one of these little ones for i say to you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my father who is in heaven for the son of man is come to save that which was lost what think you if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them should go astray doth he not leave the ninety-nine in the mountains and goeth to seek that which is gone astray and if it so be that he find it amen i say to you he rejoiceth more for that than for the ninety-nine that went not astray even so it is not the will of your father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish but if thy brother shall offend against thee go and rebuke him between thee and him alone if he shall hear thee thou shalt gain thy brother and if he will not hear thee take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may stand and if he will not hear them tell the church and if he will not hear the church let him be to thee as the heathen and publican amen i say to you whatsoever you shall bind upon earth shall be bound also in heaven and whatsoever you shall loose upon earth shall be loosed also in heaven and again i say to you that if two of you shall consent upon earth concerning anything whatsoever they shall ask it shall be done to them by my father who is in heaven for where there are two or three gathered together in my name there am i in the midst of them footnote there am i in the midst of them this is understood of such assemblies only as are gathered in the name and authority of christ and in the unity of the church of christ saint cyprian de unitate ecclesiae and a footnote then came peter unto him and said lord how often shall my brother offend against me and i forgive him till seven times jesus saith to him i say not to thee till seven times but till seventy times seven times therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a king who would take an account of his servants and when he had begun to take the account one was brought to him that owed him ten thousand talents footnote talents a talent was seven hundred and fifty ounces of silver which at the rate of five shillings to the ounce is a hundred and eighty-seven pounds ten shillings sterling and a footnote and as he had not wherewith to pay it his lord commanded that he should be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made but that servant falling down besought him saying have patience with me and i will pay thee all and the lord of that servant being moved with pity let him go and forgave him the debt but when that servant was gone out he found one of his fellow-servants that owed him an hundred pence and laying hold of him he throttled him saying pay what thou owest footnote pence a roman penny was the eighth part of an ounce that is about seven pence half penny english and a footnote and his fellow-servant falling down besought him saying have patience with me and i will pay thee all and he would not but went and cast him into prison till he paid the debt now his fellow-servants seeking what was done were very much grieved and they came and told their lord all that was done then his lord called him and said to him thou wicked servant i forgave thee all the debt because thou besoughtest me shouldst not thou then have had compassion also on thy fellow-servant 
even as i had compassion on thee and his lord being angry delivered him to the torturers until he paid all the debt so also shall my heavenly father do to you if you forgive not every one his brother from your hearts matthew chapter nineteen christ declares matrimony to be indissoluble he recommends the making one's self a eunuch for the kingdom of heaven and parting with all things for him he shows the danger of riches and the reward of leaving all to follow him and it came to pass when jesus had ended these words he departed from galilee and came into the coasts of judea beyond jordan and great multitudes followed him and he healed them there and there came to him the pharisees tempting him saying is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause who answering said to them have ye not read that he who made man from the beginning made them male and female and he said for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they two shall be in one flesh therefore now they are not two but one flesh what therefore god hath joined together let no man put asunder they say to him why then did moses command to give a bill of divorce and to put away he saith to them because moses by reason of the hardness of your heart permitted you to put away your wives but from the beginning it was not so and i say to you that whoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication and shall marry another committeth adultery and he that shall marry her that is put away committeth adultery footnote except it be etc in the case of fornication that is of adultery the wife may be put away but even then the husband cannot marry another as long as the wife is living and a footnote his disciples say unto him if the case of a man with his wife be so it is not expedient to marry who said to them all men take not this word but they to whom it is given footnote all men take not this word that is all receive not the gift of living singly and chastely unless they pray for the grace of god to enable them to live so and for some it may be necessary to that end to fast as well as pray and to those it is given from above and a footnote for there are eunuchs who were born so from their mother's womb and there are eunuchs who were made so by men and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven he that can take let him take it footnote there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven this text is not to be taken in the literal sense but means that there are such who have taken a firm and commendable resolution of leading a single and chaste life in order to serve god in a more perfect state than those who marry as st paul clearly shows first corinthians chapter seven verses thirty seven and thirty eight and a footnote then were little children presented to him that he should impose hands upon them and pray and the disciples rebuked them but jesus said to them suffer the little children and forbid them not to come to me for the kingdom of heaven is for such and when he had imposed hands upon them he departed from thence and behold one came and said to him good master what good shall i do that i may have life everlasting who said to him why askest thou me concerning good one is good god but if thou wilt enter into life keep the commandments he said to him which and jesus said thou shalt do no murder 
thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness honour thy father and thy mother and thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself the young man saith to him all these have i kept from my youth what is yet wanting to me jesus saith to him if thou wilt be perfect go sell what thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow me and when the young man had heard this word he went away sad for he had great possessions then jesus said to his disciples amen i say to you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven and again i say to you it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven and when they had heard this the disciples wondered much saying who then can be saved and jesus beholding said to them with men this is impossible but with god all things are possible then peter answering said to him behold we have left all things and have followed thee what therefore shall we have and jesus said to them and may i say to you that you who have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit on the seat of his majesty you also shall sit on twelve seats judging the twelve tribes of israel and every one that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall possess life everlasting and many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first end of section two Section 3 of the Douay Reims New Testament. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 3. Matthew chapter 20. The parable of the laborers in the vineyard. The ambition of the two sons of Zebedee. Christ gives sight to two blind men. The kingdom of heaven is like to an householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard and having agreed with the laborers for a penny a day he sent them into his vineyard and going out about the third hour he saw others standing in the market-place idle and he said to them go you also into my vineyard and i will give you what shall be just and they went their way and again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did in like manner but about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing and he saith to them why stand you here all the day idle they say to him because no man hath hired us he saith to them go ye also into my vineyard and when evening was come the lord of the vineyard saith to his steward call the laborers and pay them their hire beginning from the last even to the first when therefore they were come that came about the eleventh hour they received every man a penny but when the first also came they thought they should receive more and they also received every man a penny and receiving it they murmured against the master of the house saying these last have worked but one hour thou hast made them equal to us that have borne the burden of the day and the heats but he answering said to one of them friend i do thee no wrong didst thou not agree with me for a penny take what is thine and go thy way i will also give to this last even as to thee or is it not lawful for me to do what i will is thy eye evil because i am good footnote what i will that is with my own and in matters that depend on my own bounty so shall the last be first and the first last for many are called but few are chosen 
and jesus going up to jerusalem took the twelve disciples apart and said to them behold we go up to jerusalem and the son of man shall be betrayed to the chief priests and the scribes and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified and the third day he shall rise again then came to him the mother of the sons of zebedee with her sons adoring and asking something of him who said to her what wilt thou she saith to him say that these my two sons may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left in thy kingdom and jesus answering said you know not what you ask can you drink the chalice that i shall drink they say to him we can he saith to them my chalice indeed you shall drink but to sit on my right or my left hand is not mine to give to you but to them for whom it is prepared by my father and the ten hearing it were moved with indignation against the two brethren but jesus called them to him and said you know that the princes of the gentiles lord it over them and that they that are the greater exercise power upon them it shall not be so among you but whosoever is the greater among you let him be your minister and he that will be first among you shall be your servant even as the son of man is not come to be ministered to but to minister and to give his life a redemption for many and when they went out from jericho a great multitude followed him and behold two blind men sitting by the wayside heard that jesus passed by and they cried out saying o lord thou son of david have mercy on us and the multitude rebuked them that they should hold their peace but they cried out the more saying o lord thou son of david have mercy on us and jesus stood and called them and said what will ye that i do to you they say to him lord that our eyes be opened and jesus having compassion on them touched their eyes and immediately they saw and followed him matthew chapter twenty one christ rides into jerusalem upon an ass he casts the buyers and sellers out of the temple curses the fig tree and puts to silence the priests and scribes and when they drew nigh to jerusalem and were come to bethpage unto mount olivet then jesus sent two disciples saying to them go ye into the village that is over against you and immediately you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her loose them and bring them to me and if any man shall say anything to you say ye that the lord hath need of them and forthwith he will let them go now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying tell ye the daughter of zion behold thy king cometh to thee meek and sitting upon an ass and a colt the foal of her that is used to the yoke and the disciples going did as jesus commanded them and they brought the ass and the colt and laid their garments upon them and made him sit thereon and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way and others cut boughs from the trees and strewn them in the way and the multitudes that went before and that followed cried saying hosanna to the son of david blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest and when he was come to jerusalem the whole city was moved saying who is this and the people said this is jesus the prophet from nazareth of galilee and jesus went into the temple of god and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the chairs of them that sold doves and he saith to them it is written my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves and there came to him the blind and the lame in the temple 
and he healed them and the chief priests and scribes seeing the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple and saying hosanna to the son of david were moved with indignation and said to him hearest thou what these say and jesus said to them yea have you never read out of the mouths of infants and of sucklings thou hast perfected praise and leaving them he went out of the city into bethania and remained there and in the morning returning into the city he was hungry and seeing a certain fig tree by the wayside he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves only and he saith to it may no fruit grow on thee henceforward for ever and immediately the fig tree withered away and the disciples seeing it wondered saying how is it presently withered away and jesus answering said to them amen i say to you if you shall have faith and stagger not not only this of the fig tree shall you do but also if you shall say to this mountain take up and cast thyself into the sea it shall be done and all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer believing you shall receive and when he was come into the temple there came to him as he was teaching the chief priests and ancients of the people saying by what authority dost thou these things and who hath given thee this authority jesus answering said to them i also will ask you one word which of you shall tell me i will also tell you by what authority i do these things the baptism of john whence was it from heaven or from men but they thought within themselves saying if we shall say from heaven he shall say to us why then did you not believe him but if we shall say from men we are afraid of the multitude for all held john as a prophet and answering jesus they said we know not he also said to them neither do i tell you by what authority i do these things but what think you a certain man had two sons and coming to the first he said son go work to-day in my vineyard and he answering said i will not but afterwards being moved with repentance he went and coming to the other he said in like manner and he answering said i go sir and he went not which of the two did the father's will they say to him the first jesus saith to them amen i say to you that the publicans and the harlots shall go into the kingdom of god before you for john came to you in the way of justice and you did not believe him but the publicans and the harlots believed him but you seeing it did not even afterwards repent that you might believe him hear ye another parable there was a man a householder who planted a vineyard and made a hedge round about it and dug in it a press and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a strange country and when the time of the fruits drew nigh he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits thereof and the husbandmen laying hands on his servants beat one and killed another and stoned another again he sent other servants more than the former and they did to them in like manner and last of all he sent to them his son saying they will reverence my son but the husbandmen seeing the son said among themselves this is the heir come let us kill him and we shall have his inheritance and taking him they cast him forth out of the vineyard and killed him when therefore the lord of the vineyard shall come what will he do to those husbandmen they say to him he will bring those evil men to an evil end and let out his vineyard to other husbandmen that shall render him the fruit in due season jesus saith to them have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected the same is become the head of the corner by the lord this has been done 
and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you that the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and shall be given to a nation yielding the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it shall grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they knew that he spoke of them. And seeking to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes, because they held him as a prophet. Matthew chapter 22 The Parable of the Marriage Feast Christ orders tribute to be paid to Caesar. He confutes the Sadducees, shows which is the first commandment in the law, and puzzles the Pharisees. And Jesus answering, spoke again in parables to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a king who made a marriage for his son, and he sent his servants to call them that were invited to the marriage, and they would not come. Again he sent other servants, saying, Tell them that were invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my beeves and fatlings are killed, and all things are ready, come ye to the marriage. But they neglected, and went their ways, one to his farm, and another to his merchandise. And the rest laid hands on his servants, and, having treated them contumeliously, put them to death. And when the king had heard of it, he was angry, and sending his armies, he destroyed those murderers, and burnt their city. Then he saith to his servants, The marriage indeed is ready, but they that were invited were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, call to the marriage. And his servants, going forth into the ways, gathered together all that they found, both bad and good and the marriage was filled with guests. And the king went in to see the guests, and he saw there a man who had not on a wedding garment. And he saith to him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having on a wedding garment? But he was silent. Then the king said to the waiters, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the exterior darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called, but few are chosen. Then the Pharisees, going, consulted among themselves how to ensnare him in his speech. And they sent to him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art a true speaker, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou dost not regard the person of men footnote the herodians that is some that belonged to herod and that joined with him in standing up for the necessity of paying tribute to caesar that is to the roman emperor some are of opinion that there was a sect among the jews called herodians from their maintaining that herod was the messiah and a footnote tell us therefore what dost thou think is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not. But Jesus, knowing their wickedness, said, Why do you tempt me, ye hypocrites? Show me the coin of the tribute. And they offered him a penny. And Jesus saith to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They say to him, Caesar's. Then he saith to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And hearing this, they wondered, and, leaving him, went their ways. That day there came to him the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die having no son, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up issue to his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, having married a wife, died, and not having issue, left his wife to his brother, in like manner the second and third, and so on to the seventh. And last of all the woman died also. At the resurrection, therefore, whose wife of the seven shall she be? 
for they all had her. And Jesus answering said to them, You err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they shall neither marry nor be married, but shall be as the angels of God in heaven. And concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken by God, saying to you, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And the multitudes hearing it were in admiration at his doctrine. But the Pharisees, hearing that he had silenced the Sadducees, came together. And one of them, a doctor of the law, asked him, tempting him, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, and with thy whole soul, and with thy whole mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment, and the second is like to this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments dependeth the whole law and the prophets. And the Pharisees being gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think you of Christ? Whose son is he? They say to him, David's. He saith to them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit on my right hand, until I make thy enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Matthew chapter 23 Christ admonishes the people to follow the good doctrine, not the bad example of the scribes and Pharisees. He warns his disciples not to imitate their ambition, and denounces divers woes against them for their hypocrisy and blindness. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have sitten on the chair of Moses. All things, therefore, whatsoever they shall say to you, observe and do, but according to their works do ye not, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy and insupportable burdens, and lay them on men's shoulders, but with a finger of their own they will not move them. And all their works they do for to be seen of men. For they make their phylacteries broad and enlarge their fringes. Footnote. Phylacteries, that is, parchments, on which they wrote the Ten Commandments and carry them on their foreheads before their eyes, which the Pharisees affected to wear broader than other men, so to seem more zealous for the law. End of footnote. And they love the first places at feasts, and the first chairs in the synagogues, and the salutations in the marketplace, and to be called by men rabbi. But be not you called rabbi, for one is your master, and all you are brethren. And call none your father upon earth, for one is your father who is in heaven. Footnote. Call none your father, neither be ye called masters, etc. The meaning is that our father in heaven is incomparably more to be regarded than any father upon earth, and no master to be followed who would lead us away from Christ. But this does not hinder but that we are by the law of God to have a due respect both for our parents and spiritual fathers. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 23 and verse 15. And for our masters and teachers, and a footnote, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master Christ. He that is the greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be humbled, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut the kingdom of heaven against men. For you yourselves do not enter in, and those that are going in you suffer not to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you devour the houses of widows, 
praying long prayers for this you shall receive the greater judgment woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites because you go round about the sea and the land to make one proselytite and when he has made you make him the child of hell twofold more than yourselves woe to you blind guides that say whosoever shall swear by the temple it is nothing but he that shall swear by the gold of the temple is a debtor ye foolish and blind for whether is greater the gold of the temple that sanctifieth the gold and whosoever shall swear by the altar it is nothing but whosoever shall swear by the gift that is upon it is a debtor ye foolish and blind for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift he therefore that sweareth by the altar sweareth by it and by all things that are upon it and whosoever shall swear by the temple sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth in it and he that sweareth by heaven sweareth by the throne of god and by him that sitteth thereon woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites because you tithe mint and anise and cumin and have left the weightier things of the law judgment and mercy and faith these things you ought to have done and not to leave those undone blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites because you make clean the outside of the cup and of the dish but within you are full of rapine and uncleanness thou blind pharisee first make clean the inside of the cup and of the dish that the outside may become clean woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites because you are like to whited sepulchres which outwardly appear to men beautiful but within are full of dead men's bones and of all filthiness so you also outwardly indeed appear to men just but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites that build the sepulchres of prophets and adorn the monuments of the just footnote build the sepulchres etc this is not blamed as if it were in itself evil to build or adorn the monuments of the prophets but the hypocrisy of the pharisees is here taxed who whilst they pretended to honour the memory of the prophets were persecuting even unto death the lord of the prophets End of footnote. and say if we had been of the days of our fathers we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets wherefore you are witnesses against yourselves that you are the sons of them that killed the prophets fill ye up then the measures of your fathers you serpents generation of vipers how will you flee from the judgment of hell therefore behold i send to you prophets and wise men and scribes and some of them you will put to death and crucify and some you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city that upon you may come all the just blood that hath been shed upon the earth from the blood of abel the just even unto the blood of zacharias the son of barachias whom you killed between the temple and the altar footnote that upon you may come etc not that they should suffer more than their own sins justly deserve but that the justice of god should now fall upon them with such a final vengeance once for all as might comprise all the different kinds of judgments and punishments that had at any time before been inflicted for the shedding of just blood and a footnote amen i say to you all these things shall come upon this generation jerusalem jerusalem thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee how often would i have gathered together thy children as the hen doth gather her chickens under her wings and thou wouldst not behold your house shall be left to you desolate 
for i say to you you shall not see me henceforth till you say blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord matthew chapter twenty four christ foretells the destruction of the temple with the signs that shall come before it and before the last judgment we must always watch and jesus being come out of the temple went away and his disciples came to show him the buildings of the temple and he answering said to them do you see all these things amen i say to you there shall not be left here a stone upon a stone that shall not be destroyed and when he was sitting on mount olivet the disciples came to him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the consummation of the world and jesus answering said to them take heed that no man seduce you for many will come in my name saying i am christ and they will seduce many and you shall hear of wars and rumours of wars see that ye be not troubled for these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be pestilences and famines and earthquakes in places now all these are the beginnings of sorrows then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall put you to death and you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be scandalized and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall seduce many and because iniquity hath abounded the charity of many shall grow cold but he that shall persevere to the end he shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a testimony to all nations and then shall the consummation come when therefore you shall see the abomination of desolation which was spoken of by daniel the prophet standing in the holy place he that readeth let him understand then they that are in judea let them flee to the mountains and he that is on the housetop let him not come down to take anything out of his house and he that is in the field let him not go back to take his coat and woe to them that are with child and that give suck in those days but pray that your flight be not in the winter or on the sabbath for there shall be then great tribulation such as hath not been from the beginning of the world until now neither shall be and unless those days had been shortened no flesh should be saved but for the sake of the elect those days shall be shortened then if any man shall say to you lo here is christ or there do not believe him for there shall arise false christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch as to deceive if possible even the elect behold i have told it to you beforehand if therefore they shall say to you behold he is in the desert go ye not out behold he is in the closets believe it not for as lightning cometh out of the east and appeareth even into the west so shall also the cowling of the son of man be wheresoever the body shall be there shall the eagles also be gathered together footnote wheresoever etc the coming of christ shall be sudden and manifest to all the world like lightning and wheresoever he shall come thither shall all mankind be gathered to him as eagles are gathered about a dead body and a footnote and immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be moved 
footnote the stars or flaming meteors resembling stars and a footnote and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with much power and majesty footnote the sign etc the cross of christ and a footnote and he shall send his angels with a trumpet and a great voice and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the farthest parts of the heavens to the utmost bounds of them and from the fig tree learn the parable when the branch thereof is now tender and the leaves come forth you know that summer is nigh so you also when you shall see all these things know ye that it is nigh even at the doors amen i say to you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done heaven and earth shall pass but my words shall not pass footnote shall pass because they shall be changed at the end of the world into a new heaven and new earth end of footnote but of that day and hour no one knoweth no not the angels of heaven but the father alone and as in the days of noah so shall also the coming of the son of man be for as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage even till that day in which noah entered into the ark and they knew not till the flood came and took them away so also shall the coming of the son of man be then two shall be in the field one shall be taken and one shall be left two women shall be grinding at the mill one shall be taken and one shall be left watch ye therefore because you know not what hour your lord will come but this know ye that if the good man of the house knew at what hour the thief would come he would certainly watch and would not suffer his house to be broken open wherefore be you also ready because at what hour you know not the son of man will come who thinkest thou is a faithful and wise servant whom his lord hath appointed over his family to give them meat in season blessed is that servant whom when his lord shall come he shall find so doing amen i say to you he shall place him over all his goods but if that evil servant shall say in his heart my lord is long in coming and shall begin to strike his fellow-servants and shall eat and drink with drunkards the lord of that servant shall come in a day that he hopeth not and at an hour that he knoweth not and shall separate him and appoint his portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth matthew chapter twenty five the parable of the ten virgins and of the talents the description of the last judgment then shall the kingdom of heaven be like to ten virgins who taking their lamps went out to meet the bridegroom and the bride and five of them were foolish and five wise but the five foolish having taken their lamps did not take oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with the lamps and the bridegroom tarrying they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go ye forth to meet him then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said to the wise give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out the wise answered saying lest perhaps there be not enough for us and for you go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves now whilst they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut but at last came also the other virgins saying lord lord open to us but he answering said amen i say to you i know you not watch ye therefore because you know not the day nor the hour 
for even as a man going into a far country called his servants and delivered to them his goods and to one he gave five talents and to another two and to another one to every one according to his proper ability and immediately he took his journey and he that had received the five talents went his way and traded with the same and gained another five and in like manner he that receiveth the two gained other two but he that had received the one going his way digged into the earth and hid his lord's money but after a long time the lord of those servants came and reckoned with them and he that had received the five talents coming brought other five talents saying lord thou didst deliver to me five talents behold i have gained other five over and above his lord said to him well done good and faithful servant because thou hast been faithful over a few things i will place thee over many things enter thou into the joy of thy lord and he also that had received the two talents came and said lord thou deliverest two talents to me behold i have gained other two his lord said to him well done good and faithful servant because thou hast been faithful over a few things i will place thee over many things enter thou into the joy of thy lord but he that had received the one talent came and said lord i know that thou art a hard man thou reapest where thou hast not sown and gatherest where thou hast not strewed and being afraid i went and hid thy talent in the earth behold here thou hast that which is thine and his lord answering said to him wicked and slothful servant thou knowest that i reap where i sow not and gather where i have not strewed thou oughtest therefore to have committed my money to the bankers and at my coming i should have received my own with usury take ye away therefore the talent from him and give it him that hath ten talents for to every one that hath shall be given and he shall abound but from him that hath not that also which he seemeth to have shall be taken away and the unprofitable servant cast ye out into the exterior darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth and when the son of man shall come in his majesty and all the angels with him then shall he sit upon the seat of his majesty and all nations shall be gathered together before him and he shall separate them one from another as the shepherd separateth the sheep from the goats and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on his left then shall the king say to them that shall be on his right hand come ye blessed of my father possess you the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was hungry and you gave me to eat i was thirsty and you gave me to drink i was a stranger and you took me in naked and you covered me sick and you visited me i was in prison and you came to me then shall the just answer him saying lord when did we see thee hungry and feed thee thirsty and give thee drink or when did we see thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and covered thee or when did we see thee sick or in prison and came to thee and the king answering shall say to them amen i say to you as long as you did it to one of these my least brethren you did it to me then he shall say to them also that shall be on his left hand depart from me you cursed into everlasting fire which was prepared for the devil and his angels for i was hungry and you gave me not to eat i was thirsty and you gave me not to drink i was a stranger and you took me not in naked and you covered me not sick and in prison and you did not visit me then they also shall answer him saying 
lord when did we see thee hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to thee then he shall answer them saying amen i say to you as long as you did it not to one of these least neither did you do it to me and these shall go into everlasting punishment but the just into life everlasting matthew chapter twenty six the jews conspire against christ he is anointed by mary the treason of judas the last supper the prayer in the garden the apprehension of our lord his treatment in the house of caiaphas and it came to pass when jesus had ended all these words he said to his disciples you know that after two days shall be the pasch and the son of man shall be delivered up to be crucified then were gathered together the chief priests and ancients of the people into the court of the high priests who was called caiaphas and they consulted together that by subtlety they might apprehend jesus and put him to death but they said not on the festival day lest perhaps there should be a tumult among the people and when jesus was in bethany in the house of simon the leper there came to him a woman having an alabaster box of precious ointment and poured it on his head as he was at table and the disciples seeing it had indignation saying to what purpose is this waste for this might have been sold for much and given to the poor and jesus knowing it said to them why do you trouble this woman for she hath wrought a good work upon me for the poor you have always with you but me you have not always footnote me you have not always that is in a visible manner as one conversant here on earth and as we have the poor whom we may daily assist and relieve and a footnote for she in pouring this ointment on my body hath done it for my burial amen i say to you wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world that also which she hath done shall be told for a memory of her then went one of the twelve who was called judas iscariot to the chief priests and said to them what will you give me and i will deliver him unto you but they appointed him thirty pieces of silver and from thenceforth he sought opportunity to betray him and on the first day of the azimes the disciples came to jesus saying where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the pasch footnote azimes feast of the unleavened bread pasch the paschal lamb and a footnote but jesus said go ye into the city to a certain man and say to him the master saith my time is near at hand with thee i make the pasch with my disciples and the disciples did as jesus appointed to them and they prepared the pasch but when it was evening he sat down with his twelve disciples and whilst they were eating he said amen i say to you that one of you is about to betray me and they being very much troubled began every one to say is it i lord but he answering said he that dippeth his hand with me in the dish he shall betray me the son of man indeed goeth as it is written of him but woe to that man by whom the son of man shall be betrayed it were better for him if that man had not been born and judas that betrayed him answering said is it i rabbi he saith to him thou hast said it and whilst they were at supper jesus took bread and blessed and broke and gave to his disciples and said take ye and eat this is my body footnote this is my body he does not say this is the figure of my body but this is my body the second council of nicaea action six neither does he say in this or with this 
is my body but absolutely this is my body which plainly implies transubstantiation and a footnote and taking the chalice he gave thanks and gave to them saying drink ye all of this footnote drink ye all of this this was spoken to the twelve apostles who were the all then present and they all drank of it says st mark chapter fourteen verse twenty three but it no ways follows from these words spoken to the apostles that all the faithful are here commanded to drink of the chalice any more than that all the faithful are commanded to concentrate offer and administer this sacrament because christ upon this same occasion and at the same time bid the apostles to do so in these words st luke chapter twenty two verse nineteen do this for a commemoration of me and a footnote for this is my blood of the new testament which shall be shed for many unto remission of sins footnote blood of the new testament as the old testament was dedicated with the blood of victims by moses in these words this is the blood of the testament etc hebrews chapter nine verse twenty so here is the dedication and institution of the new testament in the blood of christ here mystically shed by these words this is the blood of the new testament etc and a footnote and i say to you i will not drink from henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when i shall drink it with you new in the kingdom of my father footnote fruit of the vine these words by the account of st luke chapter twenty six verse twenty two and eighteen were not spoken of the sacramental cup but of the wine that was drunk with the paschal lamb though the sacramental cup might also be called the fruit of the vine because it was consecrated from wine and retains the likeness and all the accidents or qualities of wine and a footnote and a hymn being said they went out unto mount olivet then jesus saith to them all you shall be scandalized in me this night for it is written i will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be dispersed footnote scandalized in me etc for as much as my being apprehended shall make you all run away and forsake me and a footnote but after i shall rise again i will go before you into galilee and peter answering said to him although all shall be scandalized in thee i will never be scandalized jesus said to him amen i say to thee that in this night before the cock crow thou wilt deny me thrice peter saith to him yea though i should die with thee i will not deny thee and in like manner said all the disciples then jesus came with them into a country place which is called gethsemane and he said to his disciples sit you here till i go yonder and pray and taking with him peter and the two sons of zebedee he began to grow sorrowful and to be sad then he saith to them my soul is sorrowful even unto death stay you here and watch with me and going a little further he fell upon his face praying and saying my father if it be possible let this chalice pass from me nevertheless not as i will but as thou wilt and he cometh to his disciples and findeth them asleep and he saith to peter what could you not watch one hour with me watch ye and pray that ye enter not into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak again the second time he went and prayed saying my father if this chalice may not pass away but i must drink it thy will be done and he cometh again and findeth them sleeping for their eyes were heavy and leaving them he went again and he prayed the third time saying the self same word then he cometh to his disciples and said to them sleep ye now and take your rest 
behold the hour is at hand and the son of man shall be betrayed into the hands of sinners rise let us go behold he is at hand that will betray me as he yet spoke behold judas one of the twelve came and with him a great multitude with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the ancients of the people and he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying whomsoever i shall kiss that is he hold him fast and forthwith coming to jesus he said hail rabbi and he kissed him and jesus said to him friend whereto art thou come then they came up and laid hands on jesus and held him and behold one of them that were with jesus stretching forth his hand drew out his sword and striking the servant of the high priest cut off his ear then jesus saith to him put up again thy sword into its place for all that take the sword shall perish with the sword thinkest thou that i cannot ask my father and he will give me presently more than twelve legions of angels how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that so it must be done in that same hour jesus said to the multitudes you are come out as it were to a robber with swords and clubs to apprehend me i sat daily with you teaching in the temple and you laid not hands on me now all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled then the disciples all leaving him fled but they holding jesus led him to caiaphas the high priest where the scribes and the ancients were assembled and peter followed him afar off even to the court of the high priest and going in he sat with the servants that he might see the end and the chief priests and the whole council sought false witness against jesus that they might put him to death and they found not whereas many false witnesses had come in and last of all there came two false witnesses and they said this man said i am able to destroy the temple of god and after three days to rebuild it and the high priest rising up said to him answerest thou nothing to the things which these witnesses against thee but jesus held his peace and the high priest said to him i adjure thee by the living god that thou tell us if thou be the christ the son of god jesus saith to him thou hast said it nevertheless i say to you hereafter you shall see the son of man sitting on the right hand of the power of god and coming in the clouds of heaven then the high priest rent his garments saying he hath blasphemed what further need have we of witnesses behold now you have heard the blasphemy what think you but they answering said he is guilty of death then did they spit in his face and buffeted him and others struck his face with the palms of their hands saying prophesy unto us o christ who is he that struck thee but peter sat without in the court and there came to him a servant maid saying thou also wast with jesus the galilean but he denied before them all saying i know not what thou sayest and as he went out of the gate another maid saw him and she saith to them that were there this man also was with jesus of nazareth and again he denied with an oath i know not the man and after a little while they came that stood by and said to peter surely thou art one of them for even thy speech doth discover thee then he began to curse and swear that he knew not the man and immediately the cock crew and peter remembered the word of jesus which he had said before the cock crow thou wilt deny me thrice and going forth he wept bitterly matthew chapter twenty seven the continuation of the history of the passion of christ his death and burial and when morning was come all the chief 
priests and ancients of the people took counsel against jesus that they might put him to death and they brought him bound and delivered him to pontius pilate the governor then judas who betrayed him seeing that he was condemned repenting himself brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and ancients saying i have sinned in betraying innocent blood but they said what is that to us look thou to it and casting down the pieces of silver in the temple he departed and went and hanged himself with an halter for the chief priests having taken the pieces of silver said it is not lawful to put them into the corbona because it is the price of blood footnote corbona a place in the temple where the people put in their gifts or offerings and a footnote and after they had consulted together they bought with them the potter's field to be a burying place for strangers for this cause that field was called Haseldama, that is the field of blood even to this day then was fulfilled that which was spoken by jeremias the prophet saying and they took the thirty pieces of silver the price of him that was prized whom they prized of the children of israel and they gave them unto the potter's field as the lord appointed to me and jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him saying art thou the king of the jews jesus saith to him thou sayest it and when he was accused by the chief priests and ancients he answered nothing then pilate saith to him dost not thou hear how great testimonies they allege against thee and he answered him to never a word so that the governor wondered exceedingly now upon the solemn day the governor was accustomed to release to the people one prisoner whom they would and he had then a notorious prisoner that was called barabbas they therefore being gathered together pilate said whom will you that i release to you barabbas or jesus that is called christ for he knew that for envy they had delivered him and as he was sitting in the place of judgment his wife sent to him saying have nothing to do with that just man for i have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him but the chief priests and ancients persuaded the people that they should ask barabbas and make jesus away and the governor answering said to them whether will you of the two to be released unto you and they said barabbas pilate saith to them what shall i do then with jesus that is called christ they say all let him be crucified the governor said to them why what evil hath he done but they cried out the more saying let him be crucified and pilate seeing that he prevailed nothing but that rather a tumult was made taking water washed his hands before the people saying i am innocent of the blood of this just man look you to it and the whole people answering said his blood be upon us and upon our children then he released to them barabbas and having scourged jesus delivered him unto them to be crucified then the soldiers of the governor taking jesus into the hall gathered together unto him the whole band and stripping him they put a scarlet cloak about him and plaiting a crown of thorns they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand and bowing the knee before him they mocked him saying hail king of the jews and spitting upon him they took the reed and struck his head and after they had mocked him they took off the cloak from him and put on him his own garments and led him away to crucify him and going out they found a man of cyrene named simon him they forced to take up his cross and they came to the place that is called golgotha which is the place of calvary and they gave him wine to drink mingled with gall and when he had tasted he would not drink and after they had crucified him they divided his garments 
casting lots that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying they divided my garments among them and upon my vesture they cast lots and they sat and watched him and they put over his head his cause written this is jesus the king of the jews then were crucified with him two thieves one on the right hand and one on the left and they that passed by blasphemed him wagging their heads and saying va thou that destroyest the temple of god and in three days dost rebuild it save thy own self if thou be the son of god come down from the cross in like manner also the chief priests with the scribes and ancients mocking said he saved others himself he cannot save if he be the king of israel let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him he trusted in god let him now deliver him if he will have him for he said i am the son of god and the self same thing the thieves also that were crucified with him reproached him with now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the whole earth until the ninth hour and about the ninth hour jesus cried with a loud voice saying eli eli lama sabachthani that is my god my god why hast thou forsaken me and some that stood there and heard said this man calleth elias and immediately one of them running took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink and the other said let be let us see whether elias will come to deliver him and jesus again crying with a loud voice yielded up the ghost and behold the veil of the temple was rent in two from the top even to the bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks were rent and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints that had slept arose and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection came into the holy city and appeared to many now the centurion and they that were with him watching jesus having seen the earthquake and the things that were done were sore afraid saying indeed this was the son of god and there were there many women afar off who had followed jesus from galilee ministering unto him among whom were mary magdalene and mary the mother of james and joseph and the mother of the sons of zebedee and when it was evening there came a certain rich man of arimathea named joseph who also himself was a disciple of jesus he went to pilate and asked the body of jesus then pilate commanded that the body should be delivered and joseph taking the body wrapped it up in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new monument which he had hewn out in a rock and he rolled a great stone to the door of the monument and went his way and there was there mary magdalene and the other mary sitting over against the sepulchre and the next day which followed the day of preparation the chief priests and the pharisees came together to pilate footnote the day of preparation the eve of the sabbath so called because on that day they prepared all things necessary not being allowed so much as to dress their meat on the sabbath day and a footnote saying sir we have remembered that that seducer said while he was yet alive after three days i will rise again command therefore the sepulchre to be guarded until the third day lest perhaps his disciples come and steal him away and say to the people he is risen from the dead and the last error shall be worse than the first pilate saith to them you have a guard go guard it as you know and they departing made the sepulchre sure sealing the stone and setting guards end of section three